H&M is the official partner for season two of the Fashion and Color podcast, partnering with Harlem's Fashion Row for two years in a row for our Sustainability Summit. H&M is revolutionizing fashion by turning recycled materials into breathtaking, eco-conscious collections, such as Heron Preston, to reshape the fashion landscape through collaborative efforts like the H2 Collection. They are not just crafting clothes, they are crafting the future of fashion. So today we are in for a double tree because this is the first time on the Fashion and Color podcast where we've actually had two guests. So I am so excited about this dynamic duo that we have on today that I've been able to see their journey through so many years and so many iterations of their brand. And it just brings me such great joy, <laughs> such great joy to have Bruce and Glenn on the Fashion and Color Podcast. Yay. Welcome, guys. As much joy as it brings you, it brings us even more joy to be here with you um, and to know you for so long and to see all the wonderful things that you've done and how you have helped and poured into our business in such a, a really wonderful way. Yeah, so we're, we're just really, we're really grateful. grateful. Yeah, happy to be. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Okay, first of all, where in the world is <laughs> Bruce and Glenn? Because you guys have been like on the road, traveling, doing all the things. How are you? How is business? Uh, we have. We've been on the road. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, we So we were... Um, a part of an organization that kind of limited our travel for a very long time. Um, and in the last two years, we sort of kind of just been let free, you know, so to speak. And we have just been doing everything that we could possibly do, exploring the world, um, uh, doing business, doing some television. We have a few passion projects that we're working on. That we hope won't just be passion and they'll be... <laughs> There'll be passion. 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 I like that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> but Bruce Glenn, Bruce Glenn, I think, kind of started as a passion project, too, um, that turned into a cash and project. So, yeah, right now we're in New York City, obviously, right? Bam, bam, bam. We're here. Or oh, are we? Are we? You don't know? <laughs> you know? Um, we're in Dumbo, sitting here. But um, just, I mean, just last week we were in L.A. for about a week, and before that we were in Milan and Paris, and before that New York again for New York Fashion Week. So we've been traveling quite a bit. Wow. Our fashion week has turned to a fashion month, a full fashion month. I used to hear people say, it's fashion month. I was like, what are you doing for the other three weeks? <laughs> are we going to Europe? I said, oh, okay, one it's day. It's only one week for us. One day, right. one day we'll get there, and, and we're now, there now. And now you were just in Italy, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 What, uh, what were you doing in Italy? So we were showing our collection in Italy in Milan um, with Camera de la Moda um, and also collaboration with Blanc Magazine. Okay. Uh, and... Um, yeah, I mean, we were showing the collection. It was a week full of press, meeting with buyers, meeting okay. with retailers. Okay. and We did some uh, TV in Italy. Okay. Um, we're, we're walking around in Italy, and people recognize us from TV. Wow. Which is, which is really crazy. This is our second time showing in Italy, uh, Milan specifically. So, like, we're really kind of gaining an audience there and a name there um, and, like, a, a stake in the fashion community in Italy. So, that's really nice. That's amazing. It's so amazing. unexpected. It's so unexpected. I know. We, we never just dreamed of anything. Like this, right? And then we had we had a um, a, a one, lot of wonderful um, meetings that uh, are potential prospects for big bigger projects in Milan, like really surprise excited. meetings. Like you know, it wasn't arranged. You know, we didn't reach out. It, it it happened like at parties or like at dinners, and it's like let's have a conversation. Oh, da, 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 da. Ooh, ooh, ee, ee, well, what da, do you da. think about you two designing this? And then you wow. know, so That's we so can't say just yet, but you know, we'll see. I love it. So I'm going to, you said this is not something we had dreamt of. Mm. So let's go back to when you were younger and you actually maybe have had a mm. dream of working yeah. in fashion. Like what was that journey from the dream to where you, to actually working in this industry? Wow. Hmm. The journey. It's been quite a um, journey. And we've been talking about, um, maturing into the dream that's what we've been talking about over the last couple couple uh, amongst days. each other and then you know we also minister at a church yep. um, that we found it um, so we've been talking about that with the members because uh, whatever we talk about with the members is just sort of an extension of like what we're having a conversation so I can remember you know little boy Bruce and Glenn not really necessarily declaring you know a love for fashion 
but it was a love for art. You know, mm -hmm. our father was an artist, and, and when he was in the house, he would draw a lot. He would do murals, and you know, when he was in the house. Oh my okay, goodness, you go better ahead. stop it, bro! Don't go there. <laughs> this ain't that kind of podcast, okay? <laughs> When he was in the house, okay? <laughs> when he was there, we, we, um, he, he was very artistic. So uh -huh. we would watch him draw and we had like this wooden table that I could remember him like always cutting out shapes and the wooden table had all these grooves in it from his X-Acto knife. And uh, so we, we were very artistic in our year. We would sit up and draw beside him or he would draw like a figure or shape and then we would color it in. Um, and I think later on, we wound up um, a lot of times drawing women in clothing. Mm -hmm. I think television kind of sparked it because we would see like these women on television. The mm -hmm. first one, okay, I'll tell you, was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay. So okay. we show, yeah. uh -huh. okay. So we were in um, elementary school and Buffy came on and, and then she just had this really cool fashion and she was like this bad, you know, uh, mm -mm, kid, vampire but killing. I'm going to kill the vampire. driving diva. And she had know? these little cool puns after she would kill a vampire. Take that vamp, you know. Uh -huh. And then she would have on like a cool outfit and so we would draw her in outfit. Outfits. And then so we started drawing girls from school in their outfits. And then that led to us making paper dolls, which my mother uh -huh. did not like. She uh -huh. said, boy, don't be making no paper dolls in my house, <laughs> right? She grabbed out paper doll dolls one time and she ripped them up. And she said, don't you ever make no paper dolls in this house. But she, you know, Even she's right, a black right, mother right. in the hood trying to right. protect her kids. Right, right. And she right. said, they ain't gonna like that out there in them streets, okay? Right. You don't make no paper dolls, play with so, a Tonka truck. I think because of the stigma surrounding like young black boys in fashion or in the hood. Especially when we were growing up. I mean, now it's a little more acceptable, right, you know, and right. like a little more universal, universal or understood. But when we were growing up, you know, it wasn't, you know, that boys, you know, were to we do. Were always things doing like things that. that was like, why y'all doing that? Go out there and play with um, them. You know what I mean? Like I was putting, I put glitter in my lotion. Um, and I, did, I didn't have any concept that this is something that girls would do. I just knew that it was look, pretty. This was before. Yeah, yeah. This was before glitter lotion was a it thing. It was before glitter. I could have made my mother was You could have made a lot of money, right? <laughs> That's like bought. when I was younger. I played the piano, and my mother put me in the most, the worst piano class ever at this old church <laughs> with this old man playing these old, old, old songs. And I said, if you had to just put me with she the right person, I could have been Alicia Keys. I could have been Alicia Keys. Right. But you know what? My glitter lotion did have that really chunky glitter in it, and it scratched you when you put it on. <laughs> so so that wouldn't have worked. But um, like I remember I got in trouble for putting glitter in the lotion. And so like... It sort of trained us to to understand that this was not going to be acceptable for us mm -hmm. to do this. So know? we, I guess, we started to dream the dream when we were younger. Mm -hmm. But then, as we got older and realized, you know, that this wasn't necessarily acceptable for mm -hmm. the time we were living in our neighborhood. You know, just the mindset of the people that were around us. We sort of kind of shied away from mm -hmm. fashion. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we were about to go to um, college in, in, um, and we were in uh, at high school that we said, you know what, we're going. I'm going to college for fashion design mm -hmm. and Glenn is going to go for um, fashion merchandise and, and business, business marketing. marketing. So it was like up till the last minute where we said, okay. Because we needed we'll do... to declare a major. You right, know? We needed right, to figure out right. what we were going to do and go to school for. And it was and... like, I'm going to be gone anyway, peace. <laughs> 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 you know, and so we that's when we really begin to delve into like fashion design and like what that could mean on a bigger scale outside of DC. Wow. And so then your first job in fashion was what? Was um, an internship for uh -huh. House of Darion. Between our sophomore junior year with House of Darion, Beyonce's company. Which that in itself was a crazy story. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like every time I'm going to say something like that was a crazy story. Uh -huh. Uh, because we we decided to go to a small liberal arts school because they gave us like two years free, basically. Okay. Uh, and we're there. And at the same time we're coming into the school, they had just hired a, a new dean mm -hmm. of fashion. Mm -hmm. And he was this man who had a collection in New York City. He was very savvy. Um, he was going to revamp the fashion department. And, and he, he did. did. He did. Mm -hmm. it, it became something, you know, New York-like, you okay. know, where you had this amazing curriculum. You were learning a lot. Uh, we started a fashion club on campus. Bruce became the um, the president, and I was the vice president. <laughs> it was called Club Mode, which is a fashion club in French. Uh -huh. And um, uh, we he had... got. Oh, okay. I was going to mm -hmm. talk about uh, our dean. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to say he got uh -huh. a job 
with House of Darion ah. as their creative director. And so I guess we were very active students. So okay. he was like, you know, I got this job. Why don't you come with me this summer to New York City to work this internship? Wow. Was that your first time in New York City? That it wasn't, wasn't our, our first time, time. but it was <laughs> it was uh, the longest time we had spent in okay. New York City. Okay. And so we uh, went to New York City and like he turned into a different person. And it was like the An devil wears Prada. From hell. It was so crazy. It was um, so the, degrading. Like, if I tell you all the experiences we had, you'd be like, what? I mean, like, we we did his laundry. We cooked his dinner. You know, we picked up his dry cleaning. We, we waited for the cable guy at his house. We, we helped him move be his apartment for. from one apartment to the oh other. My gosh. You know, um, I remember one time at the end of the day, the table was dirty. And he said, um, the he table needs the to wet be clean. Wax and put it on a table and said, And I was like, there's sturdy. a cleaning lady coming today. She's coming today. He said, no, you clean it. And he stood over us while we wiped the table. And he said, you missed the spot. We wiped and that I, table with that wet wipe, but we also wiped it with our tears that day. And I was crying. <laughs> I was crying while I wiped it. And my tears were streaming oh down my, my face. Oh, my God. That's horrible. <laughs> I, know. I know. He was a very pay your dues sort of person. You okay. Know? So he okay. felt like we needed and to And somebody pay our probably dues. had a dime like that. So exactly. he felt like he needed to. He worked for all the big couture houses in, okay. in Europe, so I can just imagine like what his experience may have been. Right, you know, right. mm -hmm. so. when I look at you all, I see resilience, I see tenacity, I see courage. Um, it's just been amazing to kind of watch you go from you know, this thing and saying, okay, that kind of worked, but let me pivot to here. And I feel like there is something in you, both of you is like, oh, I'm not going to quit. Where'd that come from? I don't, um, I think it came from not having much. I mean, that's, that's like my most immediate answer, but maybe I need to go to a therapist and figure out really where it came uh -huh, from, you know? Uh -huh. um, it, 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 we were always in a position where there were things we needed and we needed to figure out how to get Or if not need it, want it. Um, and we were like, I know mom doesn't have a lot of money, you know. I know that I can't go to her to ask for money for the ice cream truck. Mm -hmm. So we built a business. When we were in um, uh, elementary school, we had, a, we had a lemonade stand. We sold pets to our neighbors, and they were drawn paper pets. And then we put them on a subscription weekly to get drawn paper food. So we would come back to this. What? We would come back to this. is brilliant. <laughs> Don't tell my daughter this. She'll start that business tomorrow. So we were always, I guess, very, I mean, and I, I didn't really realize it until we looked back. You know, we were very always, always very enterprising and, and, and entrepreneurial, looking, looking somehow, some way to make money and to, and, to, and to figure out a way to get things done, you know. And so I guess it's always kind of been that way. Like, we'll figure out a way somehow. I don't and we're know like, how, okay, if that's not the way, out. if that's not the way, it's just obviously like God is leading us to something else. So we'll just do that. And if that's not the way that he's leading us to something else until we find a groove and something new that works, you mm -hmm. know, um, and uh, it has been exhausting in some respects, but it's also been very rewarding um, yeah. uh, to to almost it, it, I wouldn't say it's anything in and of ourselves to almost like stumble upon something new, discover a new pocket of who we are and what we can do and what we can be. Um, uh, that's been like a fun journey. It has. What'd you say? You know, the other thing I would say is consistency. Mm -hmm. So people probably see you all now and they're like, oh, they got the colorful hair and it feels very 2024, but you guys were doing this in 2012. Yeah, we were. Like, we were. Remember our little. Our yeah, little. <laughs> I'm like, y'all have been doing this for a long time. Uh, we got a chance to talk a little bit before we started recording the podcast. And um, like, I wanted you to share, like, what's one kind of specific challenge or struggle that you all had? in really kind of, I guess, making your way in this mm -hmm. industry? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the the biggest one that we had was money. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, and, and, and I will also say, like, uh, finding our specific voice, being okay with that voice, and um, understanding that that's how we were wired and made, and it's mm -hmm. our specific contribution to the world. And then really being comfortable with putting that out into the world. Uh, I, I think like that for us was one of the major discoveries 
that that helped us personally as people and then also as a brand mm -hmm. like once you once you realize okay well this is who i am you know like because because at first were you like because i did this mm -hmm. when, we, when i first started hfr i felt like i needed to be a certain person yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. to do hfr yeah. it wasn't until my dad had a stroke uh -huh. that i was like all bets are off yeah mm. like people like you're gonna get the full on southern yeah. brandis like i have yeah. I have nothing else to give myself, mm -hmm. and that's all I'm going to give. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and and so you know, I oh. feel like sometimes like something has to happen to make you go, yeah, like I'm enough, yeah, right. whatever I am, yeah, I'm enough. And guess what? Like it works great for what I want to yeah. do. Yeah, that's it. Right. That that moment for for us was, I was walking across the street one day. I was I was like doing the. Doritos run. I don't know. We were watching TV or something. And um, the Lord said to me, um, Bruce, you're so special and unique. And I was like, oh, really? Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and he was like, no, but everyone is. And mm -hmm. I have designed everyone specifically and uniquely to be them. They have their own blend of special spices inside of them that I've also designed to come out of them and to be exposed mm -hmm. to the world. And we do ourselves a disservice when we try to mold and shape that to look like what someone else's looks like. Mm -hmm. Ourselves a disservice in the world a disservice. In the world a disservice. Yeah. Because... Each and every single person has something very unique to give the world. And yeah. there are people waiting to respond to your specific uniqueness. And I think that's that's when we just started doing us. You mm -hmm. know, what began to flow out of us naturally. You know, we started doing um, the patterns and we started doing the color and the things that just felt good and sparked joy for us. We spent so much us. time in the industry designing specifically for someone else's vision. You know, mm -hmm. whether it was we were working for Sean John or we worked for American Rag. So we knew the Hill things Finger that or... ticked the market. You mm -hmm. know, the things that worked. You know, mm -hmm. this kind of body works in a junior's market. These colors, this kind of print. You know, what's, what's trending this season? You we know? need something that's going to transition from work to um, evening, you know what I mean? Uh, something like the Rachel Roy 24 hour dress, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, and it, th that's the way we, we would think, you know? And then we And while that knowledge is good to have, it should not be a box that you put yourself yeah. in. You and know? to some degree, it still influences our design, but on a very, very, very low level. Mm -hmm. And in a high level, it's just like what we love and what, what just because like pumps we out We noticed that when we started doing what we love and just what flowed out of us is when we begin to get response and when people started to look at Bruce Clinton. And that was a very clear, for people, it was a very clear connection. Like when they would look at the clothes and they would it's like so be us. so different from anything out there in the market. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of something I used to wear in high school. Mm -hmm. Like that was my thing. I knew, color, I color, 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 yes, color. Yes. Um, so I know both of you are ministers mm -hmm. and you have a church in LA. Yes. And, and one here in New York too. And one here in New York yeah. too. How does that, fit into what like do you guys try to separate the two or is it like yeah. this is this is like one big pot of gumbo someone <laughs> just asked us this question too um earlier today um uh, it's one big gumbo yeah yeah i it's mean the whole it's the kitchen sink gumbo you know i think throw everything in there i think that i think that we have the pleasure and the honor of introducing church in a new way um, so if it if it was the traditional church, the one that everyone expects and the one that they probably went to and their grandmother when they were growing up, of course, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but like church, the way that I feel like that God has put on our heart to do it and introduce it to people. I think when they understand that and then they see our brand and then just meet us and kind of get a sense for the kind of ministers that we are, it all begins to make to make sense. Um, and I, I really believe that we were meant to introduce God to people in a way that is very digestible, in a way that um, is, is is shrouded, not shrouded, because that means it's covered up, um, but that is infused with the love of God. Mm -hmm. So in such a, a, a way that... Um, uh, and to show um, this generation that they, there doesn't have to be a separation in the two, your, mm -hmm. your, your dream or the gifts that God's put inside of you and like, talking about him or serving him but they like nowadays we used to be so adamant about like wherever we went we would tell somebody hey you have a church you go to say this prayer with me come on repeat mm -hmm. after me heavenly mm -hmm. father you we know? would go into a place with the goal of how many people we would do that with mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. but and i we think we scared that. a lot of people away okay uh, okay they i think we still don't get invited to some parties <laughs> just because of that okay they're like oh don't invite them they're going to preach in this party you know what i mean <laughs> 
But uh, now we realize that it's just about being. Yeah. Because he lives inside of us. Yeah. And so if we are just who we are, who he's created us to be, it automatically begins to spark conversation. And there's more, I mean, what we've seen is that there's more power in that because the the unconscious understanding of that that is in you, it radiates. And people say, it's something about you guys being here. There's something that you carry with you. Something, oh, when you left, I could feel that you left. Mm. What is going on? I, you know, and and I know, I we know that that's not us. You know, we know that that is that unconscious understanding that, that God is with that me, God is with know? me. He's in me. I don't have to wear a, the a, you know, a big uh, cross on my, on my neck or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may yeah. be, you know, or, you know, whatever the things that point to the fact that I'm a Christian people it's felt, you yeah. know, and they get it and they begin to ask questions and things like that. So people, you said people start to ask questions and mm -hmm. I know earlier you were talking about it shows up in unexpected ways. Oh, it does. It does. Like whenever we say, yeah, we're the, they say fashion preachers. What does that mean? Because we call ourselves the fashion preachers. And they're like, so you preach about fashion, huh? Oh, I get it. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> but like, we're actually ministers. They're like, and so we're, we're there in the environment to talk about this collection that's standing behind me right here. And they say, no, 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 no. Tell me more about the fashion, the preaching thing. <laughs> or oh, so, we're at a party. I remember we were at a party in LA and you know, it was, it was a, LA party, you know? And so. one person knew that we were ministers and we were going around introducing ourselves. And we don't say that right off because sometimes it makes people in an in environment uncomfortable if they know that. Or they start to ministers. censor themselves because they uh, think they they'll be like, mother, certain. oh, sorry, minister. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, shoot, the ministers are here. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, God, okay. forgive me. You know, and I'm like, it's okay. It's not, not words we haven't uh -huh. heard before, right? And so we were at this party and we were going around introducing ourselves and we said, hey, we're Bruce and Glenn. We're fashion designers. And the person was like, and... <laughs> You are ministers. <laughs> and we're like, yes. yes. And we're like, yeah. And they were like, oh, okay. And they said, tell us a little bit about your church. So, like, we stopped the whole circle of going around. Now we're talking for like 10 minutes about the church, which is fine. And, and I love it. And so they, they're really starting to understand, like, who we are. And so in the middle of the party, the host of the party, and this is a party, I mean, they're-, they're It's an they're, LA party, they're so you know. They're smoking marijuana, they got edibles on the table, you know what I mean? I'm not partaking in that, let me just say that. <laughs> That's not, I wasn't, it wasn't me. Uh, but I'm there in the environment. And so- um, <laughs> Second hand, second hand. Second hand. <laughs> uh, no, but the host of the party, she says, hey, can I just talk to you for a second? And then we go over to the corner, she's like, can you pray? just because, you know, I, I want to have a baby and I, and I would love to have twins. Can you just lay your hands on? So we start praying for this girl. And I remember praying for this girl at this party. And all of a sudden, as we start praying, I feel the presence of God. It was just a God. simple prayer. We weren't mm. speaking in tongues or anything. You know what I mean? It was just a simple but prayer. But I felt the presence of God in a way that I was like, oh my, I was like, I was like, is oh this the God. weed or what? So like, no, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Uh, it was the Lord, Bruce. It was, it was the it was, Lord. It was, I'm sorry. I just had to make a joke. I'm yeah, sorry. no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. And so um, I feel the presence of God and I'm like, oh my gosh. And it, it, it made me to understand that God is not who we think he is. Mm. You know, mm. he's at the places. And it's it's so simple because the Bible says that he sat with, you know, the sinners. He was in the places you thought he would never be, right? But I was like, God is so present here and he wants to move here. And, and like, so people from the table, they're like, hey, can you come, can you pray for us next? And we're like, oh Y'all had gosh. a prayer line at a party. <laughs> we had a prayer line at a party. <laughs> we had a prayer line at a party. <laughs> and everyone was completely okay with it, you oh know? Oh my God. And so, like, <laughs> like this is the best. This is the best. It's, it's crazy because, like, when when we have opened ourselves up to say, "This is who we are." There's no separation. Yes, we're at this party where all the stuff is going on, but we're also bringing God. He shows up in the most unexpected ways. He's like, "I already been here. I just was waiting for you to understand that yeah, I was here." You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we had another incident, I think I was telling you a little while ago, that um, we were at an event during Fashion Week, this past Fashion Week, actually. And so we walk in, and one of our friends who's a photographer, he sees us, he's like, I got to talk to y'all later, right? And so and I already he's, know- He's what, photographing the event. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so I already like, know what that means, because he knows we're ministers, and so- And he, he comes, was like, this is what I've been dealing with, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to with a drink in my hand, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> hey, man. Okay. Okay. And it's so we he tells us and then we minister to him. Um, and honestly, I cannot tell you exactly what we said. But in the midst of me talking, he said, that's it. That's the answer that I've been looking for. And I was like, really? What? Oh, what? Wow. You know, like, I don't even know what we said. And he was like, I forgot that Jesus loves me. Wow. And you made me remember that. 
And he said, I don't wake up in the morning saying Jesus loves me and starting my way that day. He said, usually I'm thinking that Jesus must be disappointed with me. He's upset with me. I've, I have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not in that mindset. And he said, and I think that's, that's, that's one of the tricks of the enemy. Okay. Come right, on now, somebody. Right. Come on. You better preach it to, to us. To make us forget, <laughs> <laughs> to make us forget like yeah. that Jesus loves us, yeah. you know, because like we were saying, if we build our foundation, our day, you know, our year, our goals on that, then yeah. nothing can, nothing can that move That beats us. your faith. That beats your confidence. Yeah. Because if he loves me, then he'll make sure everything works out. He'll make sure that there's no, no blockade in my way. He'll make sure that what seems to be a, a failure or a downfall is going to be turned around and it's going to work for my good. You better. <laughs> Listen, this these is, are the this, things that get us through. That, this thing that get me through. You know what I'm saying? It's about that resilience. It's all, it's all, this is why, it's, this is this is where it come from, you know? Wow. Just that he loves I mean, me. I can now more confidently just throw my hands up these yeah. days. Like when things aren't going our way or something's not happening the way that we think we sh that it should. You know, I was like, okay, Jesus loves me. He got this. You got it, this up to you, you there's know? There's something so powerful about surrender. Yeah. Oh, right? Like when you try to hold on and you try to control it, it's like so stressful. Yeah, so stressful. But when you like surrender it, it's like there is so much peace in that. You say, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can there feel, is, feel you letting it go. <laughs> there is so much peace in that. Um, when I see you guys, you're dressing so many people now. Like, oh, this is crazy. I feel like it's crazy because. Your collection, when it first came out, honestly, it felt like a shock to the system, right? It was like, woo! <laughs> and for some reason, I feel like in like two years, the customer base has almost caught up. Like they're almost, it's so different mm, yeah. that it's like they're almost looking for they're that looking now. How does that it. make y'all yeah. feel? Like who are some of the people who've worn your pieces oh, lately? Um, and like, how does like how does that feel? I feel like every time someone asks me this, my mind goes blank. Like, who wore it? Who wore it? Who and then people it? always ask us, like, who do you want to wear it? And then I'm like thinking, like, who do I really want to wear it? And obviously, the first answer that most designers would say is Beyonce. You know yeah. what I mean? Because she's got that. Beyonce but when I really back. think about it, it's the artist that we grew up listening to. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, the, the artist that, that we listened wore, to. wore um, something recently. Um, and one of our favorites, um, Sarah Jakes Roberts. Yes. She, she is looks a, so good. She's oh always. Jay Bolin is Jay just Bolin like, just, he's, he's a genius. You know, he's yeah. just like. And a genuine, wonderful, 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 wonderful person. Like, he visited our studio in LA, and we just had a Jesus good time. <laughs> yeah. Like, we did. We was worshiping up in there. We, you know, it was just so good. He had such a good time. So he's like a brother now, really. And, um, like, we'll just text him, be like, we got some stuff. And I'll send him pictures. He's like, send that, send that. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. She gonna wait at this Sunday. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna put that on her this Sunday. There, there was this blouse she had on. Was it like a silk or satin blouse with like the pants to go with oh, it? Yeah. It was like a gradient mm -hmm. and it just looked so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That set, that set is it's that like a million dollar stop. set for us. Um, but you know what, Sarah Jakes, whenever she wears something, I mean, everybody wants what she wears. I mean, like that weekend. Cha ching, 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 cha ching. The cash. The cash. Don't tell too many people that. The cash. Everybody got to know. But like she has so much influence. She has more influence than the fashion influencers that we send stuff to. You know what I mean? That's what we've seen. We had Gail and some stuff. Um, Gail King. Gail King. I'm like, oh, we Gail. just gonna say, okay. I'm, we just, we just gonna say Gail. All right. All I was right. just texting with Gail I, the other day. I, <laughs> I know it's true. It's true. I'm like, and, and our, why are we texting with friend, Gail King? What's her name? Her oh, good friend. Oh, oh, oh Oprah. Oh, Oprah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good friend. Oprah. We're texting with Gail. No, it's, it's, it's blowing um, my mind. Shirley because... Ralph, you know, is wearing stuff. Oh yeah, she um, looks so good in it. She looks so good. Oprah gave Shirley Ralph an A plus <laughs> plus in the outfit. She had in that same look that oh, Sarah yeah. Jakes okay, had on. Okay. And Oprah was like, "Oh my goodness, what do you have on? A plus plus?" And I was like, "I did get some. I didn't, I didn't get a lot of A plus pluses in, in in school, but I got one from Oprah. <laughs> Come on now, so I'll be okay." <laughs> right. Oh my goodness, what's what's one challenge you guys have had to overcome to get to where you are now? Like one significant challenge. One significant challenge. You just eat the challenges up, huh, Bruce? No, oh. I guess I guess we had a, we had a really. I mean, like recently, we had a really really major life change where we were involved in in ministry for a while at a, a, in a particular place, and then we we wound up leaving. And it was like a breakup. It was like a it was like it was a really, it was a real hard moment. A tough breakup because we were part of that organization for 
16 years. Mm. Six, so we grew up there, you know, and it was like family, but it was, we knew that it was time, you know, mm. that it was necessary for us to um, part ways. And that was so hard because so much of our life was wrapped up in, in our it. identity. Mm. And so we, we probably, we spiraled into uh, probably a three, four month depression. Mm -hmm. We, we literally, so we decided um, upon this this separation that we were going to move to um, L.A. And that was decided and all happened within a matter of a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And Glenn woke up one night and he said, bro, I feel like God's saying we should move to L.A. We and just knew we needed like a hard separation from everything. We, needed, we, we knew we needed a new environment. We needed to se separate ourselves from everybody that we had been attached to for so many years. And we literally, um, I woke up one night and I felt that God told me we need to move to LA. I called him because he was in the other room. I said, Bruce, we got to move to LA. He said, okay. And so the next day God told me move quickly. And mm -hmm. so I went to Craigslist and I typed in LA apartments. The first apartment that came up, I called, she showed it to me via FaceTime. I filled out an application and we moved the next week. We were Man, we ain't flight. never been approved for an apartment that quick. <laughs> Everything moved so quickly that I right. knew it was the Lord. Right. And so we got to L.A. And there was this whole process of us really figuring out who we were aside from all this, all that, mm -hmm. you know, aside from, you know, the busyness of ministry, aside from uh, literally carrying hundreds of people on our back at one time. And it, you gave, know? Us, it gave us a real opportunity to do something that had always been taught to us as selfish, which was self-care mm. and focusing on ourselves. Mm. So we were always taught, don't focus on yourself, focus on other people and God will take care of you. Mm. Uh, which now we understand is not the, not the way God designed it. Mm. Um, but in a moment, it was just like, that's the noble thing to do. Take care of other people mm -hmm. and you'll be all right, you know, so into other people's lives. And so now we had to have this whole mindset switch. And it which was, was hard. Which it was, was a, a lot of guilt. Adjustment. We felt a lot of guilt because we felt like we had just dropped a bunch of people. But we realized that we were no good. Mm -hmm. We were burnt out. We were we had, we had high, high blood, blood pressure. pressure. We I mean, were was... just neglecting ourselves in so many mm -hmm. ways to take care of other people. And we stopped. And we really begin to focus on taking care of ourselves. And, and, and moving to L.A. was the change that sort of kind of broke everything free. And we lives. got into TV, you know, um, we uh, stylists are like living right around the corner from mm -hmm. us, you know. Um, so A much peace of mind. Let's talk about that. My goodness. Okay. Just, it, just going to the rooftop to get in, sit by yeah. the pool, you know what yeah. I mean? Like even in the middle of a work day, you know, taking an hour to do that, you know, to recharge. Like it's been it's been really good for us. Some people will look at this and go, how do these twins work together? It's like, it's like it's two, but then it's one. one. <laughs> like, like, what is the, what is the thing here? Because this isn't like every twin don't have this. It's true. I we know. have it special. We recognize it is, that. Yeah, it's a blessing. You know, um, we are so used to it because we're living in these bodies. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I know, but every time we start to sit beside and sit in front of someone and we're talking and it's like, boom, 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 boom. They're like, hold on, like, wait, is wait, this wait, rehearsed? Wait, wait, wait. You know? Are you, right. Have you done this before? Right. We're like, what is this? You know, um. I don't know. I, I really do believe that what God has given us between the two of us is something special for something wonderful he wants to do in this world. Bigger than uh, we could even conceive right and it's, now. It's more you than know, the brand. We think it's, we're working in it, but I think there's even a greater capacity that God's going to use it that we just haven't, we have yet to tap into, but we will. And we know it's more than than, than fashion. We know that it, the the fashion is just one lane, but we know that it's like so much bigger than and all of that. So we we do we we not that we do a lot of work, but like um uh we're intentional about fostering it between the two of us, fostering and our unity, yeah. fostering our unity, because and we understand um biblically the power of two. Yeah, you know, the Bible yeah. says one puts to flight one thousand, but two puts to flight ten thousand, and we see it every day of our lives. Like yeah. we'll get to the end of the day, and I'm like, how did we get all of that done? How? Wow. How? I don't even know how. Now, it's granted, there's still a lot more to do tomorrow, <laughs> but what we did today was pretty incredible. And do y'all separate like roles and tasks, or do y'all just kind of? We do. Kinda, okay. We do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At the beginning of the day, it's like you need to do this, you need to do that. Like I'm like in social media most of the day, um, and like drawing and sketching, conceptual lines. I'm sending emails, working with our assistant to do line sheet, you know, all the things, you know. So yeah.
it's like it's like amazing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it blessing. Is, I'm so is, grateful yeah, for this blessed. guy over it is, here. It is like, it is amazing to watch. Like, y'all's journey is, honestly, it really is one of resilience. It really is. I want you to tell me about, um, you pivoted, right, from the mm -hmm. bracelets. Mm -hmm. Is that how you got started? Was it the bracelets? We did. Yes. Um, What's something no, you had okay. to quit? Like, what was the pivot? Like, give us kind of, like, paint the picture of, like, one of the pivots you had to make. Because okay. I talked about it, but I want people to, like, hear it. Okay, so we'll tell you, like, when we decided to leave it all behind. And we were going to stop Bruce Glenn, period. Mm. Because it was, we had been doing it at that point probably for over a decade. And we felt like little it projects, wasn't. the bracelets, you know, was a and the bracelet, moment. yeah, the, the bracelets the did bag. good for a little while, you know, and then we moved on to bags, and the bags were like fun for a little while, and then we did like a little t-shirt capsule, and this was all that was all self-funded, so we were just doing what we can when we could yeah. with any extra money we can get. And that's the advice right. we always give people, you know, you have these bigger dreams, but do what is at hand, right, you know, right, right. because those things will prepare you for the next thing. So we had stopped and um, we, we were, were down working for Taylor Bird. Well, we had to go back. We needed to find a full time job because we was down and out. You hear me? We were eating ramen noodles and we was we were living in a one room basement um, apartment in Queens um, that had no windows. It was like a going home to a dungeon, and it had one little tiny bathroom. We had a bunk bed. Um, and no and this is not things. very many years ago. Wow. This is maybe like five or six, maybe s about. Six Maybe seven. seven, about six or seven years ago. And I remember um, being so upset. I was so angry with the Lord because I felt like we were doing so much for him. You know, I felt like mm. we were running around preaching, you know, leading people, talking to people, ministering. And I, and I, I re remember just feeling so forgotten. You know, mm. I felt like, why are we doing all this? You know, I mean, no I mean, one would know this because we had to go out and we had to be like, mm -hmm. hey guys, come on, let's get together. We're going to pray. Mm -hmm. We're going to preach. All right, mm -hmm. you go over there. You talk to those two people. You go over there. You talk mm -hmm. to those two. And we have to lead people, mm -hmm. you know? And so we'd be walking upstairs for Bible study like this. And we get around the corner and we say, hey everybody, welcome to Bible study. Mm -hmm. You know, because we came with a sad face. It's like, mm -hmm. wait, are you broken? Mm -hmm. What's going on, mm -hmm. Bruce and Glenn? Who are you? What? And, that's, and this, this part is a whole saga in itself. So I'm not going to go into too many details, but... Um, I remember the Lord speaking to us and he says, um, cause I started naming all the things that I, I did for him and that I've done, we've done this and we do this and every day we're this, this, this. And he says, do you want to be blessed according? And I didn't get it as much as I get it now today. And I'm pretty sure there's still more to get. He says, do you want to be blessed according to what you've done? Or do you want to be blessed according to my grace mm -hmm. and the abundance of my grace? Wow. Because I can give you exact a return on what you've done. And I didn't, but it will never compare to how much I can just pour out because I love you wow. and because my And I didn't finished. realize that he was trying to get us to see that we were so busy working for the blessing. Wow. That he could not bless it because it would have been rewarding thought, that. You would right? have thought, yeah. It wow. just needed more work. Okay, right. I want more blessing, more work. more. Right. And he's like, no, 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 that's not the answer. That's not the key. Wow. And so we were at a point where we were just like, low, down and low. And so we decided um, that we needed to go back to work full time and we went to work for a, a menswear brand called Taylor Bird. Glenn actually put in my application and my, and my I resume. I said, enough is enough. I was, I was asleep and he was like submitting me for a whole bunch of stuff. And he was like, you have an interview tomorrow with the menswear brand. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, I'm so nervous. And I went in for the interview. Because we hadn't worked for anybody. So like, when you guys work for people, you you both work for them. We so did, but it, not at this not, not at this okay. particular time. So okay. he went in, he got the job, right? Okay. And so they tried to make him design and do social media. He said, I can't do both, but I do I can clone myself. Right. That's what he told him. The next day I show up and I'm like, hey, I'm your social media manager, you know? And, he, and we worked all night and we put together a presentation, a social media presentation okay. package okay. for him to uh -huh. present at this meeting tomorrow. Uh -huh. And then he came in and I was, was like, never no social media manager. I did my own social media and I thought I was pretty good at it. And I said, hey, <laughs> we'll figure it, we'll so figure we it out. So we this package, you know, over pizza and the boss is in the room. And she said, something about you two working together. I like this. I like uh -huh. this. You know, and so the only I get hired. In the whole company. <laughs> um, and uh, he got hired and we were working there. And we we decided at that point that we're going to kill this. 
I'm going to become the creative director. Glenn's going to become head of marketing. Um, and Mar I became head of marketing, he but I wanted the president position. Okay. President wow. of marketing. Uh -huh. And so um, we're uh, working, we're comfortable, we're making good money. We're you know, hard. everything. The good. boss loves us. She actually said at the conference table with everybody, she said, I don't think anybody works as hard at this company as me and Bruce and Glenn. <laughs> she said that. <laughs> Struck down under the table, like, oh my gosh, why would you say that in front of all these people? people it's true, us. it's true, but why would you say it? Why would you say people it's actually hate true. Us. They're gonna hate our guts, you know. <laughs> so, uh, because we we put in the work, like, we were like, we're just gonna kill this, we're gonna kill uh, this, we're gonna stay late, and we're gonna, gonna, gonna become the, the president. You help me with the design, but They'll one day, okay, about a year in. Uh, we would go to work at separate times because he had a, a little bit more of a schedule than I did because I was social media. Um, he went in earlier and then I came in a little later. And I said, Glenn, I think God spoke to me something this morning. And I said, I think God spoke to me too. And then we said, what did God say? And he said, don't get, get comfortable. comfortable. And we spoke it at the same time together, looking in each other's faces. Wow. And I could not believe it. And and I, I I I got mad at first. I got upset because I said, "Well, God, we've been so uncomfortable for so long. Can I be comfortable for a minute? Uh, Gosh, you know, take it easy on me. Take uh. it easy on me." <laughs> <laughs> and um, but we, we came to realize we understood that God was saying, "Don't stop dreaming," mm. because we had stopped dreaming. We were wow. done with Bruce Glenn. We were wrapping it up. It was we had what thrown in the towel. This, this was, was 2019. Wow, right before the pandemic. So you know where I'm going, right? And we designed the one bag. That Remember that grenade bag? bag? Yep, I mm -hmm. got it. Yep, we designed that grenade <laughs> uh -huh. bag. And, and so we designed that bag not being comfortable because God told us that when opportunity came, we needed to be prepared. Mm. And so we said, okay, this is as much as we can do at this moment. Let's mm -hmm. design something. We designed the bag. People were responding very well to the bag. So we were like, okay, well then let's do a whole collection. Mm -hmm. And so in 2019, mm -hmm. leading into to 2020, 2020, we decided that we were going to do a whole handbag collection mm -hmm. that we were gonna show the pandemic happens, in March of the 20. The shutdown happens. Our samples are sitting with our sample maker in New Jersey, and we said we ain't gonna pick that stuff up. Right, we don't even know we're gonna have a job next week. We still got, we still owe them two thousand dollars on that, on that, on the, on the, um. Uh, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we seemingly out of nowhere, call. we get a phone call slash email from Brandis Daniels, and, and she said we're we're having a digital show. It's gonna be a global platform, 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 platform. She said, do you have a collection you can show, 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 show? <laughs> and we said, we do at the sample maker. And you said, go pick it up. Mm. And you said, you're gonna shoot it and you're gonna put it on this digital um, mm -hmm. fashion week that was just mm -hmm. global And it really started everything like on a, another level for Bruce Glenn. Wow. But you know, the thing I always say is that we would have never, ever been prepared for the opportunity if God hadn't told us not to get comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Let me just tell you something. <laughs> tell you something. <laughs> I love it. I love your trajectory. I love your journey. I love where you are. I'm so excited about your futures. Like, so excited because... For whatever reason, I just feel like this is the time for what you have. Mm. Like, this is like your time. This is it. Look, we were um, seeing it over here. We have so many people who are going to be looking at us and say, well, how do I shop the brand? How do they shop the brand? Uh, well, there are plenty of ways. Um, uh, <laughs> the first way I think you should go is BruceGlenn.com. That's where you'll get the most assortment. Yep. That's where you get exclusives. That's mm -hmm. where you'll get things that you can't find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Starting next month, we're going to be doing a bi-weekly drop. Okay. So there'll be new product on the site every two wow. weeks. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also shop at Saks.com oh, no. and also the Fifth Avenue store at Saks. You can shop at shopbop.com. And, and then you we... can also shop in uh, Saks Atlanta. Oh, shop, uh, yeah, that's new this season, shop, um, Saks Atlanta. And then we also have an Amazon fashion store Okay. that you can shop at. So there are plenty of options. There are plenty of there options. There are plenty of options. If of you weeks. had to leave us with one last word, what would it be? I'm gonna start with Glenn. Um, I always tell people, don't give up. <laughs> and I know it sounds so cliche, but if you continue, there is the sure opportunity for your success. But if you quit, sure failure. Don't give up. Bruce? Um, I would always say keep on smiling. 
uh, because I, I think the smile is infectious. Someone's going to smile looking at your smile, and then they're going to reflect it back to you. And then no matter what you're going through, it's always going to turn around. So you might as well smile in the interim mm. until you get to a real reason to smile. So good. Thank y'all oh. so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. This was fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Fashion and Color Podcast. I want to thank our production partner, PVA Entertainment, the Harlem's Fashion Row team. Thank you so much for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row and for your support of Designers of Color. Please be sure to leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to share this with a friend. Welcome to the HFR movement.